So we are back with part two. We are going to be addressing some of the most burning questions and comments you folks had. If you missed part one, check it out. Hey, if you missed my previous interview or the one before that I did with Chris from Aptera, check those out. Uh, but we'll just get into it. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> Chris, so good to have you back, of course. Thanks, Brian. It's good to be back. Yeah. So these are some of these are more fun than others. Okay, next person to interview Chris at one of these events should look at the screen and determine in the gamma is the solar panel hooked up? The answer I think to that is no. Uh yeah, they're hooked up. So uh, we, we did if you were, I don't think when we went to the Tesla takeover though that we had the UI in it that showed it was actually charging though. So, okay. um, and remember that the Tesla takeover vehicle did not have the solar hood. So it was mm -hmm. only the dash and the roof that was charging the battery. It wasn't, it wasn't all the panels. So, uh, we have a new, um, panel coming for gamma. It's supposed to be here this week. I thought it was supposed to be here yesterday. So, so the next event we go to, hopefully we'll have the, the hood and the dash and the roof charging all at the same time. But it won't show on the screen yet because that's uh, part of yeah, the we, UI. We, we fixed that. Yeah. It, it will show. Mm -hmm. So there we go. There you go, John. I got you your answer. Uh, this is a very important one. Larry wants to know, you missed asking when my vehicle will be ready for pickup. Yeah. So uh, Larry wants to know him specifically. I, I well, don't, I don't Larry, care about if... first deliveries. We answered that already. <laughs> well, Tell we me. have this accelerator program going. If you invest mm -hmm. more than $10,000 in the Uptera, you get one of the first 2,000 delivery spots. So obviously, if you participate in the accelerator program, you get your vehicle quicker. Um, if you haven't uh, done the accelerator program, but you have a reservation, then it's really where are you in the list? We have 46,300 orders now or so. So that's a lot, a lot of people waiting in line. Well, that um, brings me to part two of his comment, which is I want to know when the accelerator program will accept more money from non-accredited investors. Uh, he probably meant when we're going to open up the crowdfunding again, and we, we have opened up the crowdfunding, so you can go to the Republic platform and invest uh, $200, or you can go straight to the Uptera website and invest $1,000. Uh, through the Uptera website, too, you can join the accelerator program, and if you invest more than 10000 you get one of the very first delivery spots, which we, uh, we think is pretty cool. Uh, universe is under no obligation wants to know. And I think we already answered this in the previous video. When are you going to freeze the design? Uh, the, the architecture of the vehicle and most major systems have been frozen. Uh, we have 92% of our bill of materials, um, sourced and awarded to suppliers. Uh, the other 8% is brackets and screws and, you know, stuff like that. Um, as I said, you know, the thermal system, we're still respecting the pump. So that's a, blank on the bill of materials um, and some interior components like, like the sun visor, um, you know, was just finished by Jason last week. I'm sure that's the design phase. I'm sure that's like the um, um, industrial design phase and then they have to do the mechanical engineering design phase and release, release each part of it. Uh, so there's still some things that we're working on, but the architecture has been frozen for, you know, six months. Great. So this is a fun one from Dave wants to know, how will you ship them since car carriers don't have a middle wheel track? Um, we, uh, we have talked this through and they will probably come with dollies where you've got two wheels on the outside oh. and a center carrier and you'll, you know, you'll lock the wheels and then back up the Uptera onto the carrier and you'll put a strap over it and then you can basically drive the Uptera with, with four wheels. <laughs> that's, that's a elegant solution. Modern Sunlight also asks, when is investment going to open again? And it sounds like you're saying the crowdfunding portion is open. Yep, we opened it up a couple of weeks ago now. So yeah, it's uh, it's open again. We we exceeded our maximum, so we were oversubscribed again. And when you're oversubscribed, you have to go back to the SEC and you have to refile and say, okay, I'm oversubscribed. We want to raise this much more money. Here's our new filing, and then they have to approve you. That month took, or that uh, that effort took like two months um, this last time. So we had to shut down the campaign for two months go through that whole process and that now it's back open and you can invest. So it, it looks like you've got an early, some early ideas for autonomy. Um, yes. There were some very specific questions pointed at Tesla. Would you use their FSD? But my question more generally is, would you, 
if somebody comes along and has a perfect level four or level five system, would you use it? You know, the question for us is we're so energy efficient that it's mostly an energy consumption question for us. Uh, the Kama AI system is just perfect in the way that, that, you know, it's artificial intelligence kind of acts more like a human than kind of a descriptor. It doesn't have to recognize that it's a, a traffic cone or a trash can to make a decision. It just knows there's something in the road. Don't hit it. Um, you know, hey, those are traffic lines. They're solid. Stay between the traffic lines. Uh, things that we would make a decision, you know, doing, uh, going through an intersection, you know, hey, um, you know, don't don't stop in the intersection um, type type stuff. Um, but the, the beauty of the Kama AI system and the hardware uh, that we can get from Kama AI is it's very energy efficient. It's, you know, 35 watts is your whole autopilot system. It only has two forward-facing cameras. That's it. So we, we talked to some early on, we talked to like some LiDAR people. And they're like, oh, with level four autonomy all day long. Well, what's the energy consumption? Oh, it only uses 1,800 watts. 1,800 watts? You know, the Aptera uses 1,800 <laughs> watts at highway speeds just pushing the vehicle. You, you want us to double our energy consumption to, to have an autopilot system? That's, that's crazy talk. Um, you know, and even the Tesla system, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's an energy hog, you know, in our opinion. So um, it's got way too many cameras and way too many features uh, for what we think you really need. I mean, it's really lane keeping, automatic emergency braking, um, the, the uh, adaptive cruise control. I mean, those are the big hitters. That's what people want. That's 90% um, kind of, of what people want. Yeah. And even the Calm AI, I mean, it'll do full autonomy, but it does it with just forward-facing cameras. So if somebody's going to sideswipe you uh, from the rear, you know, hey, can't pick that up. But that's such a corner case. You know, right. I, I don't think you should protect for that. We have a great, you know, heads-up vision system that shows you what's going on 180 degrees behind you. So we think there needs to be some human interaction in that. And we think that level three autonomy is perfect for us to start. Level two and a half, level three autonomy. We don't need to be level four anytime soon. You know, let's work with Kama AI over the next two years to get to get you know a more sophisticated system as we grow. And I think that'll keep everybody happy. So you know, right now we've just been focused on on those on the, on the big hitters: automatic emergency braking, lane keep, adaptive cruise. And isn't the joy of an Aptera the driving it itself? <laughs> exactly. You wouldn't buy a Formula One car and expect to sit there and look out and enjoy the scenery. Well, you know, when you, when you have a thousand miles of range, you know, adaptive cruise control is awesome. Lane keep is awesome. Right. You know, you're, right. you're on a journey, brother. So, you know, we think that's great. You know, hands off driving, you know, the Calm AI system looks at your face to make sure you don't look away from the road too long. I mean, I think that's the way to do it. You know, you can, you can, you can be doing other stuff, but, you know, you still need to be looking at the road in any case. The technology is not that good, you know, yet all around, you know. So keep your eyes on the road in general and let the Aptera comma AI system do the steering and braking and adaptive cruise, and you'll have a very enjoyable journey, and you won't have to stress about traffic or anything like that. Well, and I hope that forward collision warning becomes mandatory because... There's just too many Honda bumps out there. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen a number of questions. What about adding a third seat in the middle in the back or four seat versions, five seat versions? Uh, is, is a quadricycle limited to two seats? Um, you know, once we start to build bigger variants of the Aptera, then yeah, we can have as many seats as you want. The the, you know, the platform now is kind of supportive of three seats, but probably not four or five seats. Right. Um, you know, we'd have to get into four wheeled vehicles. And obviously right. we think that our technologies are extensible to, to everything. Everything can be more aerodynamic, lighter weight, have a more efficient powertrain, and you could put solar power on it. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we will have bigger, more capable vehicles to deliver packages, deliver food, to do security, to, you know, run, to check your meter, your gas meter, your electric meter. Um, you know, the interesting thing uh, about a solar powered vehicle is that, you know, people don't care as much about the variable cost of fuel. Uh, gas goes up a dollar and people still are driving SUVs. Uh, but fleets really care about how much they're spending on fuel. And, you know, all the California fleets, they want to shift over to electric vehicles. Uh, but if you even have 100 electric vehicles in, in your fleet, the utility can't run enough power to your parking lot to charge all those electric vehicles. You can't put enough charging stations in. 
Um, you know, Tesla's done a great job at expanding the supercharger network, but it, if you're a fleet, you want to manage them all yourself. You want to have them all on your property. So, so what do you do? You, you end up with a bunch of little parking lots everywhere to try to get enough power to charge all your vehicles. Or you buy an Aptera, and we have, you know, wireless nuclear generated power from the sun. And as long as the Aptera is out in the sun, it's getting free power. And even if you, you know, kind of, you have a use case at 60 miles a day and you're only getting 40 miles from the sun, uh, you know, with a regular old extension cord, 1300 watts from a regular outlet, you can get over 200 miles of charge into your Aptera overnight. So we think we're a real kind of breakthrough technology for fleets where they can adopt EV technology, they can drastically lower their fuel costs, um, and they don't have to be burdened with the grid charging infrastructure that they would with other electric vehicles. So it's, it's like a, it's like a four-tier checkbox for, hey, you know, we need to get Apteras uh, in our company. So until we get cold fusion, what I hear you saying is very, very hot fusion at a distance uh, is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, it only takes eight minutes from that energy to reach us, and it's free. It's a pretty day. good deal. It's a pretty good deal. I'm, I'm on board. Uh, so the big question, of course, is how much more cash do you actually need to get into production? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're continually raising crowdfunding, and that certainly helps. Uh, we've been looking for that, you know, inspired billionaire to write us a $50 million check. Uh, we think we're able to put a lot of other things to work now. You know, we just got back from a trip to New York, and, um, you know, our, our intellectual property is very valuable, so we think we can, you know, uh, utilize that um, as leverage uh, to possibly get some, some debt. Um, get some debt in the company, uh, continue our crowdfunding and find, uh, you know, some bigger equity dollars along the way. Um, and then we can do equipment financing and other stuff as we get closer to production to kind of bridge those, uh, bridge the rest of those numbers. But, you know, it's, it's an expensive endeavor to build a, a technologically advanced vehicle like we have. Uh, but we're to doing build anything, it anything, really. Yeah, almost anything. You know, but, but I, you look at other vehicle programs and, you know, they're billion dollar multi-billion dollar programs you know working with sandy monroe and you know being able to make this a very lean manufacturing uh vehicle you know only six parts in our body structure it's kind of you know elon's wet dream um you know with these giga presses to reduce the number of parts in the model y and the number three but you know there's there's still you know 30 parts uh, or so uh, in those vehicles even though they're building much bigger parts we've got six uh, you bond them together it's super tolerant um, so, you know, we feel we're ahead, you know, in many ways like that. We don't paint our vehicles, um, you know, over 40 to 50 percent of the capitalization of a modern automotive plant is just in the paint shop. So half the money that it costs to, to get your vehicle into production to capitalize can come just from the paint shop and 80 percent of the emissions from your factory can come just from the paint shop. So we got rid of yeah, I had asked Sandy Monroe how much a paint shop costs, and he said, "How much do you want to spend? You could spend a billion if you want. It, it, how, yeah. It, yeah. Three to five hundred million to start for a for a, a high volume line, up to seven fifty a billion if you want. So, uh, so if you because I'm just going to tell you now, there's clearly a ton of billionaires watching my channel. If they were to write you a check right now, what is the lowest number that definitely gets these into production? 50? Uh, you know, we, we think a $50 million equity check makes everything else happen. Right. Uh, we, makes... We, could, we, we could do it for less, but, you know, there's contingencies. There's, you know, what, what if this supplier doesn't work out? There's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, um, a little extra cash would, would help you soothe over. But... You know, we, 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 we've, um, we, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of lures out in the pond, right. uh, and we're getting some bites and, you know, these, uh, these sovereign, uh, deals that we've been talking to have been taking a while. Uh, but, you know, I think, uh, I think these other deals, you know, as the, uh, uh arm just did an IPO that was successful. So we're kind of seeing, seeing some green shoots, uh, in the market that weren't there six months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the, the investment climate is, is very good for debt because interest rates are high now. Um, and it seems like there's some green shoots on the equity side too. So, you know, our 
we get that much closer to production, we're that much more tangible, our bill of materials is, you know, basically locked, we've got this great partner in Italy, um, you know, we've got, you know, an amazing, uh, you know, cell supply partner, you know, Maxion for the solar cells and, you know, battery supply partner. So all the things have kind of come together to make our story that much better over the last six months. So I think we're just, we're in the best position we've ever been in to raise the serious capital we need to get this vehicle into production. And it's going to happen. Just it's very exciting. It's very exciting. And a lot of, I've, there were plenty of comments saying, oh, they're, they'll never make it. And it's, well, statistically, nobody does. Um, but this is a, a very different product. And the, I, I the fan base that you've put together is, yeah, is, is pretty special. We, we, we feel like the world needs this. We feel like efficient transportation is going to make the world a better place. And we have over a million people following us on social media that agree. We have almost 100,000 people on our newsletter list that agree. When we send out a newsletter, you know, typically 80% of the people open that newsletter in, in a day, and 60% of those people click on a link to look at something in the newsletter. That kind of traction, that kind of interest in what you're doing, I, I haven't heard it exist anywhere else. We've talked to a lot of marketing people. They say, you have an 80% open rate? holy monkey, like, like that is crazy, you know, a, a super impressive, you know, brand or, you know, um, a cause, you know, is lucky to get a 20% open rate. 30% is like phenomenal. People are flipping out. 80% is just improbable. Um, and I right. think that's what we are. We're, we're the improbable story. It's this amount of technology that can make the world a better place that people have really gotten behind. 16,000 investors, 46,000 orders. It's it's we're going to change the world and, you know, it may take a little longer. It, it has taken a little longer, but, you know, it's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of people driving up terror around. We're going to be saving a lot of fuel. It's very exciting. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of firsts when it comes to the Aptera on the road, and I'm confident you already have someone uh, who 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 is asking you if they can be the first coast to coast drive so let me ask you can i be the first uh san diego to to the canadian border the full i5 drive uh you, i would refer you to marketing for that but. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a try uh, but, but yeah i mean um that's that's the fun part, you know, as soon as we get these vehicles on the road, you know, the first vehicles have 400 mile range battery packs. So, you know, they're, they're, they're not the, the phenomenal thousand mile, but you know, we'll, we'll, we will hack that into existence early on to set some records for sure. Um, and, you know, uh, I think just getting these out on the road, it, it's such a phenomenal, you know, performing vehicle, but it's also a phenomenal looking vehicle. So just having these out in people's hands, it, even if it's not for some extreme use case, uh, just, you know, being able to see these on the road, I think it's going to get us so much kind of third party validation and, and people, you know, just gushing over how amazing this vehicle is that that's going to really give us attraction to, you know, be building 150,000 of these things a year by 2028. And, you know, we, we want to deliver, you know, a million of these uh, by 2033. And, you know, I think that's how we make that happen. We just get them out there, get them in people's hands, get people excited about solar mobility. Well, in the comments, I need you guys to let me know that uh, you want this to happen so I can forward it on to the marketing team at Eptera. Because uh, that's the only way they'll know. Uh, it was worth a try. You can't blame me for trying. Uh, so uh, in the comments, guys, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand before you go too nuts? Maybe go back and look at the previous one because we got a lot of answers in there too. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, do all the usual things. And for everybody else, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots awfully soon. Chris, thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. You're great at this. You should have a million <laughs> followers in no time. Mm.